So welcome back to optimization problems. Uh, this kind of beans is like four and three eighths of an inch tall and like two and seven eighths, well, three inches wide. Uh, so, <clears throat> The question I have for you is what is the best shape for a can? Oh, oh, I don't have a... Um, optimization problems. What is the shape of a cylindrical can that uses the least shape to the least material? Make your life easier. I'm going to say uh, it still helps this. So that's the problem. The cylinder. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you really want to use the least amount of materials, you should make a spherical can. Now, uh, well, that's another optimization problem. But maybe there's other reasons you don't want to make a spherical can. Um, and I'm going to let you figure them out. But the thing is, it's a cylinder. Uh, cylinders are better than like prisms. If it was like a square, if the bottom was square, it would be easier to bag. But the corners use a lot of material and don't have a lot of beams in them or soda. So um, there's more than one shape of a cylinder. <clears throat> like, for example, you have, um, I'm going to go on from the side. You have the soda can. You have the skinnier soda can. I don't know. I don't know, I'm writing garbage food as well, but I think Red Bull comes in these cans. Um, if you like tall boys or not any of these shapes, uh, you could do, you could, you could go this shape. Um, so <clears throat> there's no variable, there's no letters in this in this problem. So what important quantities are there here? I guess the radius and the height. The radius and the height, I think so. If you know the radius and the height, you know a cylinder. So the question is, uh, you need to have the radius and the height be a certain, I mean, you need, uh, well, you, you need the can to hold something in it. If you make the radius very large and the height very small, you end up with a very, oh, the tuna 
Let's see now, Cam. Let's see again. It's definitely not the answer. Um, but that is just the, the shape that, that tuna fish has in the ocean. Uh, you end up with a very uh, short, fat can that uses a lot of aluminum. <clears throat> um, on the other hand, you could make a very tall, uh, skinny can, like basically a, a straw. <laughs> And that would also seems not very efficient to me. Um, I would guess the answer is somewhere in the middle. So, like I said yesterday, one reason I like these problems is that uh, it's easy to take a guess. Um, and and you can see at the end, you can see how how wrong you were. So, take a guess. So just so you have stakes in the problem. Um, so. Is the can so the options are is the can basically a square if you look at it from the side? Is it like a soda can? This is basically a soda can in shape. Uh, is it like a skinny soda can or is it something in between those three options? Sam says, I think square. Uh, well, that's an option in the poll. But now you've really committed because the poll was anonymous. Now the square is officially the Sam answer. You don't have to think that much. Just take a random guess. <clears throat> I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Now, 20. Oh, wow, this is fascinating. Um, you got 10 seconds now. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. All right, so. Um, the answer was, oh, the answer was in between the soda can and the Red Bull can. Uh, interestingly, everyone else wanted uh, to make it skinnier than that. And, and one person wanted to make it wider than, than tall. And then, well, and then, Sam said in the chat and didn't vote uh, that he wanted a, a can that looks like a square from the side. Oh, I, forgot to, I, I didn't realize I was sharing. So, um, a very, very divided class. Okay, so let's call the radius R and let's call the height H. Uh, so, well, I have some letters, um, I don't have any equations, so what quantity do I need to make biggest or smallest? What's the amount of material uh, have to do with? Mm. 
what what is the quantity we need to make largest or smallest? Largest H, smallest R. Normal, I mean, normally there's only one thing you want to make largest or smallest because um, if you have a pair of numbers, you can't really compare them. I'm asking what is our, what is our goal? What, what The problem is asking to use the least amount of material. Uh, what is... What is the amount? Of, how do we measure the amount of material? If I told you that the that you take a, a can which is one inch tall and one inch wide, how how do you measure the amount of material you need to use to make it? How do you compare it to one that is two inches tall and half an inch wide? I mean, clearly the word the least here is a is a hint. How do we make a can? Do we need to watch a YouTube video of can making? I'm kidding, I'm not gonna do that. Um <clears throat> so the amount of material is the is the area of the can. I need to use basically I need to use aluminum for the bottom. If the bottom is twice as has twice as much surface area, I need to use twice as much stuff. The same for the side and the same for the top. So what I need is to make the surface area, do I need to make it large or small? Small, right. Okay. I need to, I need to find the cylinder with the smallest surface area. Um, so let's call this one A. So um, A probably has a formula in terms of the radius and the height. But what is the other thing? So is there something relating the radius and the height? They should be, um, because there's two letters. And I want to end up with just one letter. Otherwise, I could just make, make them both very small, which would make the surface area very small. So you could go make the radius and the width a, a tenth of an inch. That will use very little material. Why can't you why can't you make R and H both tiny? So this is a person. And to scale, this is the shape of a soda can. So why is the shape of the soda can not this instead? 
then it wouldn't be big enough to make it to all those scan. Thank you, Matthew. Um, the volume has to be 12 ounces. Uh, so that's why you can't make them uh, as small as you want. So uh, just so we experience the pain of the imperial system, 12 ounces is 21.66 cubic inches. So let's work in inches. <clears throat> okay, so let's draw a different picture. So we have a cylinder of radius r and height h, and the volume Um, the volume is fixed at 21 and a half, and I want the smallest area. So I want to minimize the area. Okay, so at this point, we probably need to find some formula somewhere for for the volume and the area. Does anyone remember the volume of the cylinder? I guess not. The volume of a cylinder or of a prism of any shape is the area of the base uh, times the height. So that's pi r squared h. Um, So what is the area? So the area, well, the area is the sum of the of the top and the bottom and the side. What shape does the side have, the side of a cylinder? A rectangle. Thank you, Sydney. So, if you unroll the cam, it becomes uh, two circles and a rectangle. And if I wanted to draw it like halfway in the unrolling process, it would look like this. This will be in scant and roll it. Uh, well, I guess I can take a piece of paper and roll that. <clears throat> um, this is a cylinder, but I made it out of a rectangle of paper. And well, the top and bottom are flat, so. The top and bottom are um, are just circles. So the area is well. The the top and the bottom are circles. I hope you still remember the area of a circle. And the side is a rectangle. Uh, well, the height of the rectangle is the height of the cylinder, and the the width of the rectangle is the circumference, which is 2 pi r. Or you can look look, look this up, who cares. Um, so this is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. So I have the function I want to minimize, and I have an equation constraining what r and h can be. So since the function involves two letters, as I expected, since I had two letters to begin with, the radius and the height, um, I would like to make it just one letter. <clears throat> um, 
so that I can use derivatives. The area is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. 2 pi r h is the, is the area of a rectangle. Um, I mean, I could say from a formula that I found on Google, but if I look at the side of the can, the, the height of the rectangle is, is h. And the width that I get when I enroll this, that side of the rectangle was going around the circle before. So it's the length of the circumference. Uh, the length of the circumference is of a radius r is 2 pi r. If I take my cylinder and make a paper, um, the height of the, the the height when I enroll enroll it is the same, but the the length of the base, uh, well, when once I I roll it into a circle, it becomes the length of the circle. Does that make sense? So all right. So now we're done with words because I we wrote in our formulas. So um, the volume is fixed at twenty one point six two six. So and and the area is what I want to minimize. So since the area involves two variables. I want to uh, use the other equation. to solve for one and plug into a so that I get a, a function of one variable the only kind of function that I know what to do with. So um, I'm going to go with the easiest one, because why would I do the hardest one? So I'm going to solve for h. h is 21.66 divided by pi r squared. So then I can plug in here, and I have 2 pi r squared plus um, 2 pi r h. So I can simplify this. Since I need to take the derivative later, better simplify it before, before doing anything to it. OK, so now I have a function of r that I want to that I want to maximize. So let's find the critical points. So at this point, I don't need to think. I just need to blindly take the derivative. C where is zero. I guess I need to think what R could be. I got to remember that R is not negative. <clears throat> I guess it could be as big as it wants. Um, so uh, no, let me copy it again. Next page. A is two pi R squared plus two point twenty one point sixty six divided by R. So what we should do is take the derivative and see where it's zero. So um, I can use the power rule. You can just, um, if you like it better, you can write the r in the denominator as r to the negative one. So then it's clear that you should be using the power rule. And you have negative one times two 
times 21.66 times r to the negative two. So I'm gonna ignore that one. Um, so the critical point of this uh, A happen when the derivative is zero or when it's not differentiable, but this function is differentiable everywhere. Um, so, oh, oof. zero equals four by R minus two times 21.66 times one over R squared. So what do I do with this equation to solve for R? How about you put one of the terms on each side? Put one term on each side and then multiply the r's all to the, the same side. Or by r. So this will become four pi r cubed. And maybe I take this number and I move it to the other side. So that the r is even lonelier. Uh, maybe I'll simplify that too. Maybe I'll take the cubic root. All right. Um, so I have no idea what that number is. Can I? How do I do the cubic roof? Mm. I don't know how to do it. One point fifty one inches. <clears throat> Remember, I'm, I'm working with cubic inches, so the length is going to come out in inches. So the radius is one and a half. So it's one and a half inches, basically. So the diameter is supposed to be three inches, uh, which is a little more than the diameter of this can. But I, I don't know if this can is still ounces. It only tells me the weight. I think it's bigger. Um, well, there's only one critical point. So I'm trying to look for the minimum. So I need to figure out if this is it or if it's not it. So how can I do that? <clears throat> I guess by looking for concave up or down. We're looking for what? Concave up or down. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. That's probably the best thing to do. Um, oh, to copy them again. So a. So the second derivative test is going to tell me if this is a local min or max immediately. 
and I would like to know if it's a global minimum. So, um, to see if the critical points are 1.51 is max or min, use the second derivative. Test. So what's the second derivative? Well, it's pretty easy. Uh, the, it's still just a power rule. So negative two, so the r to the one just becomes a, a number. And here I have negative two, r to the negative three. So that term ends up with two negative signs Or in other words, uh, a positive sign. So R is always positive. So this is just always positive. So the the function it looks like this. Uh, it's always concave up. And the derivative, so we just figured out that the derivative of a prime is always positive, which would make a prime always increasing. So the derivative is always increasing. And it's zero at 1.51 approximately. So that means that a prime of r is always positive since it's increasing. It's always positive after this point and it's always negative before it. And this means that um, we found the global minimum. The absolute minimum. Because if forever it decreases before it, and then forever it increases, it increases after. Uh, well, the only way it can look like is like this. So I mean, we could have guessed, but um, the whole point of this is to know for sure. And now we do. Are there any questions? All right. So R equals 1.51 is the, the best shape. Um, so what is H? How do I find H? Plug R into the other question, find H. Uh, yeah, we have the volume. So we had that the volume was by R squared H, which told us that H was 21.66 divided by, by R squared. So plug it in there. Twenty one point sixty six 
divided by pi three point zero two. This is exactly double. Oh, it really looks like it's exactly double. <clears throat> so the best shape, um, is uh, 1.5 inches radius. So if this is one inch, it's one and a half. And the height is twice as that. So the height is the same as the diameter. And the shape is uh, well, the shape looks like a square seen from the side. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, now I'm guessing, I don't remember the, the exact answer. I, maybe it would have been better to just call 21.66 equal to V instead of plugging the number to get confused. But it seems to me like um, it was exactly a square. So someone, so one do they? Uh, so, so this is the this is the answer. Apparently, uh, apparently, cans should be as tall as they are wide. Uh, so why aren't they? Well, because uh, I mean, there's a reason they don't like Coke one students or professors design their industrial stuff. Because it's not that they're wrong. They know perfectly well that this is the correct, that this is the best shape. Uh, but they have other reasons to not make it like this. <clears throat> Does anyone? I mean, I, I don't I don't actually know, uh, but I have a guess for why cans are are not this shape. And I don't think it's necessarily marketing or only marketing, only that, that it looks better. Easier to stack. I don't think so. I think you can stack. This might be even easier to stack since they're they're less likely to fall over. I think so. Let me tell you what I think. Um, this is well. This is less obvious here, but if you look at a soda can, when you press your thumb against the side, it makes a sound. It goes crack. And when you do that on the top, it doesn't make any sound. Uh, because, and also, also if you if you go like this, if it's empty and you squish it, it squishes, but it doesn't squish this way. Uh, because the top and the bottom are, are a lot thicker than the, than the side. The side is like flimsy. I don't know why that is, but, if once probably because they've realized assuming I assume once you stack them you probably the part that's more likely to break is the top and bottom. I assume I'm not sure. Um but once you realize that you need that you can make use less material to uh for the side, then you can make it taller. Then it becomes more efficient to make it taller. 
Um, I don't know. One day, maybe I should destroy a cam. I don't. I, well, no, I couldn't. I couldn't wait the density, figure out the density of the top versus the side. I have no idea. <clears throat> but anyway, I think I think the reasons. Honestly, I was told this in the math class, so who knows? Uh, I think the reason uh, cams are skinnier is that the sides are cheaper. So what you wanted to maximize, um, we're here we're saying just the area, but area in the top and bottom is more valuable than area on the side. All right, oof, we're probably take very long. Okay, um, let's start another one and I'll finish it tomorrow. So, these are all in the book. Um, I'm so there's a there's a whole section where they so um, like I was saying yesterday, a place where these problems are very important is in economics, where you go, especially when you go, how much stuff do I need to produce, and how much am I going to spend producing the thing, and how much do I do I make um, and an, an issue uh, thing is that these people have their own language for everything the, the people who study business and or economics so this is the problem um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get through any of this. No, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I'll start a different one today. So I'm not gonna have time. So, which point on um, the parabola? y squared equals 2x is closest to 1, 4. <laughs> okay, uh, so this is this problem. This problem is screaming for a picture. Um, so the parabola, so this is like the parabola y, y equals x squared divided by two, except um, the x and y are interchanged. So it goes through zero, zero, if, um, if x is one, y is going to be root two, if x is two, y is going to be exactly to um, y is three, um, x is four and a half. Let's see, we're looking parabola. And now I'm looking at the points one, four. And you're looking for the closest point. And if you if you draw a magnificent picture like I just did, uh, you can already guess which one it is. <clears throat> but anyway, um, what quantities are involved here? Um, well, if I call the closest points x, y, the, it's the coordinates of the points, x and y. Um, 
what quantity I want to make largest or smallest. If I'm finding the closest point, what has to be largest or smallest? The distance, yeah. Um, I want to minimize it if they're closest. I want to minimize the distance from x, y to one form. So, um, since there's both x and y, this is going to depend on two letters. So, how, how are they related? Why is the answer not x equals 1 and y equals 4, which would make the distance very small indeed? Okay, so they have to be, x, y has to be in the parabola. Thank you, Matthew. Um, and I know that the points on the parabola are exactly the points satisfying the equation of the parabola. I need to have y squared equals 2x. So there's the relation between x and y. It's gonna make it easy to solve for, um, x in terms of y. Uh, so all I need is a formula for the distance. So if I have 1, 4 and x, y, how do I measure this? Well, oh. um, I have two points for which I know the coordinates. The way I measure the distance between them I'm pretty sure you've seen this at some point in your life, is to draw a vertical and a, a vertical and horizontal path and use the Pythagorean theorem. This side, this leg of the this leg of the triangle has length x minus one, and this leg of the triangle has length uh, four four minus y. So the distance is the square root of x minus 1 squared plus 4 minus y squared. So the problem is given um, y squared equals 2x, minimize the distance. And I'll finish this tomorrow, but you got you know how it goes. You solve for one in terms of the other, you plug it into D, you take the derivative, you find the critical points, you try to figure out if the one you found is the minimum, or if you found more than one, try to find out which is the best, and you're done. All right. Um, so that's it. My office hours today are at 10. Um, so you can ask me questions.